be taking to you uh, to a basic slide with uh, all the features and the enhancements that we have done in version 8.4. And uh, so I'll just uh, begin. So here are the latest features that we have brought in uh, the uh, latest version 8.4. So we have made a couple of uh, improvements to the monitoring side as well as the operation side. So we have monitoring features. Uh, we have brought in monitoring features for file location mon monitoring, which includes file FTP and SFTP monitoring. Also brought in uh, IPQ monitoring and uh, interesting widget that helps you uh, find out your uh, licensing cost for the stock server. Also on the uh, also logic apps data monitoring also being added to the data monitoring side of things. And for the operation side, we have uh, brought uh, SQL AD service operations from uh, all the SQL server and the desktop server. And then we have uh, SQL server jobs. So we'll be able to uh, uh, monitor, enable our two operations on the uh, SQL server. So next, uh, we have a couple of uh, enhancements that we have done in one four. So uh, first one is uh, the health, uh, desktop health monitoring. Uh, so uh, the uh, in message box view has been uh, replaced with uh, the, uh, the stock health monitoring in the, our latest version. A couple of improvements to the uh, alarm configuration, and also uh, URL or the uh, webhook for URL uh, can now be overridden in the alarm section, and a couple of performance improvements on the logic. So that's uh, basically uh, what we have done uh, in a dot version, uh, a dot four version, and uh, let's quickly uh, jump into the demo where I'll try to uh, explain each and every thing. Okay. So in the stock three hundred and sixty first, we'll uh, check out the uh, files and folder monitoring that we have brought. So under uh, monitoring section, under manage mapping, we have the file allocations where we have brought in uh, three interesting features. One is the file monitoring, uh, FTP monitoring, and SFTP. So basically what it does is uh, it will allow you to uh, monitor the count of the files uh, in, in the configure uh, that, that is uh, configured to your specific port. So, uh, Right. So, uh, so uh, just to demonstrate how it works, so it, it will basically list all the uh, ports that, uh, uh, that that is being configured in your environment along with the uh, URI for that. So every uh, port that has been uh, configured to a file location will be listed here. So you know, I'll just to quickly try to show you how to uh, monitor a file location for a particular uh, same port because I know a couple of files are there in this port. So I'll just uh, this one. So in order to uh, configure, we need to click on this configure button, and a blade will be uh, will be uh, a blade will be uh, presented in view, and it will have all the basic information like the folder location. And the file mask that uh, that is configured for that uh, folder. If you're using a network location for your uh, particular uh, send port or receive port, then you can. Uh, if it requires authentication, you can do that here. That is also an optional feature. And uh, next, we have the uh, file monitoring configuration. So it is similar to the pattern that we have uh, been uh, uh, following in other uh, monitoring sessions, like uh, MSN2 and uh, Service bus queue, so we can alert uh, configure uh, configure to throw a warning or an error here, and the uh, parameter that will be uh, monitoring will be the file count. So one interesting uh, thing that to mention here is the file count is the uh, number of files that uh, satisfy the uh, file mask here. So if your uh, file mask is XML, so it will uh, you know, the file count will be the number of uh, XML files in a particular folder. So we have a couple of uh, conditions here. So I'll just give you greater than and a particular value that I would like to set as a threshold. So I'll just hit five here and save. So here I have, I can see that I have around uh, 20 uh, files here. So uh, if you look at the file count, it, I have, I'm having around 20 files here. So I have set the threshold to five. So I'm getting an error. 
and also another thing is the uh, directory size so directory size what basically uh, give you the uh, 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 total file size of the directory that uh, you are pointing to so that's about uh, the uh, file monitoring and next what we have is the ftp monitoring so in ftp monitoring it is pretty uh, similar to what we have in file monitoring and uh, so here we can. I have uh, I have hosted an FTP in uh, two. Uh, I have hosted FTP uh, in my local environment. Okay, I think that we got distracted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, as I was saying, uh, we have FTP uh, monitoring, which is uh, pretty much similar to file monitoring. So uh, it will list all the application name, uh, the ports, and port or the port, whichever it is, and uh, I, along with the count of the uh, particular uh, file, count of the files that satisfies the file mask, and also the directory size. So in order to configure a particular uh, uh, FTP, we can click on the configure button here. So uh, once you click on the control button and we see the all the uh, latest last term results of the particular uh, FTP sample. So I so the then the last uh, uh, last execution was done and the overall status and the uh, status of the condition that I have set. In order to modify it, I can click on the configure threshold and I will be I will have all the basic information listed here. So the server, the port folder, the file mask, etc. If you, uh, if you are having uh, authentication for the FTP, then you can provide it here. So also we uh, provide the uh, connection timeout to interval. It is in seconds. So to, by default, we set it to five seconds. You can go up to 300 seconds. So if you are providing, uh, if you are using SSL, then you can also uh, you provide those information here, like if it is explicit or implicit or uh, the uh, client side to get hash information. And uh, so I'm, right now I'm not using it, so I'll just uh, disable it. And if I click next, uh, then I will have the uh, firewall settings. Here I can uh, set if it is a passive or active and the uh, type of sort that I want. If I want to make use of the default gateway that uh, that I've configured in Wisdom 360, I can enable simply enable this toggle and it will take the uh, uh, gateway settings that I have configured in Wisdom 360 settings side. Or if I want to configure it uh, manually, I can also do that here. So right now, I'm not using any proxy, so I'll just uh, leave it as it is. So if I scroll down, then we have a similar, uh, similar UI for the uh, monitoring the file count. So here also, the parameter that we'll be monitoring is the file count, and I can say it is a uh, set it is to an error or a warning. So I can also set uh, different conditions here similarly. So I'm just uh, setting to data than one. So I know uh, there is a couple of files in that location. So it is going to uh, take a one. So I'll just save the configuration. And you can see that I uh, just set to uh, the threshold is now at a one extreme. So you can also see the uh, file count and the directory size for the particular FTP. Next is SFTP. So SFTP, uh, basically everything is similar to FTP uh, apart from the uh, configuration uh, part. So if you go to configuration, uh, it is similar. We will have the uh, last run and the overall status and the current condition that we have set. You can click on uh, configure, uh, configure and uh, you will be greeted with this uh, particular plate where you will have all the basic information along with the timeout. And here also you can set the proxy. So uh, if it is, if you want to make use of the gateway proxy, I think you can do that. If I click next, then I'll have the uh, security details here. So all the uh, parameters such as accept any SSH uh, server host key, uh, the client authentication code, the password, and the SSH server host, everything can be configured from this uh, plate. So the monitoring side again, we have file count and we can configure if it is. Uh, if you want to throw a warning or an error. Another interesting thing that we have in uh, and or, or condition, so you can, based on uh, this, you can uh, set like uh, should be less than a particular value, and here you can set it to a greater than a value. You can 
monitor the range particular basically between a certain value that you desire. If I click save, then again we have a healthy state here. So uh, we can, uh, again the count that satisfies the file mask to be displayed and the directory size to be uh, displayed here. So that's about the file locations. Next, uh, we'll move on to the uh, queue size. So eight point in eight point version eight point when uh, when we introduced the MSN queue, Azure Service Bus queue, and uh, in eight point four we have added the IBM. So basically, in IBM AQ, we have two uh, adapters that helps you to connect with uh, IBM uh, queue server. So one is MSM uh, MSQ uh, server and MSQ uh, client uh, client adapter. So uh, here also you will have uh, the uh, application name, the port name, URI, the depth of the queue. If you have configured a particular uh, backout queue name, then that will also be automatically fetched and displayed here. And also the uh, depth of the uh, backout queue, and you can configure more. So you can configure monitoring by clicking on the configure button. So here I am going to. I have already configured, and I am going to show you how to uh, how it is basically done. So you, here you can uh, all the basic information that you can. Uh, that will be uh, fetched automatically, and you can provide information like the channel name, uh, connection name, uh, the uh, user ID that you have been using, and if you have enabled XSL, then you can also provide this. The uh, monitoring side, uh, you have a couple of uh, interesting uh, founders here. One is the queue depth, and another one is the queue usage. So, queue, uh, there is, uh, if you have a uh, Backout queue that you have configured, then you can uh, also monitor those. Here, I have set a condition where I want to check if the uh, current queue depth uh, uh, for the current queue is three, and for the backout queue, it should be uh, greater than five. So we'll just uh, change to less than, and if I click save, we'll have a healthy threshold here. So uh, next, uh, next one feature that we have is uh, widget. So it is an interesting widget that we have used in So basically, what it allows you to do is uh, uh, to help you calculate the licensing cost for your particular stock and mine. So uh, here it will list the portion of the stock that you have using the server type, the number of uh, logical cores and the physical cores. And the manufacturing number of the stock servers that you have, and also the uh, license uh, pricing uh, edition that you have selected based on if it is the enterprise or uh, any other, and the number of licenses that you need to buy based on the number of ports. It will also display the uh, total amount that you have to pay uh, for the particular, particular stock. So, with that, I, uh, I hand over to Mom Rachel, and he will be handling the rest of the Thanks, Krishna. So, uh, in version 8.1, we have introduced Azure Services Monitoring for Logic F and API F, and we have continued improving our Azure Services support. Like, in for example, in 8.3, we have introduced Logic F Operations, and in this release, we are uh, introducing Logic F Data Monitoring. So, uh, uh, to go to the Logic F Data Monitoring, you can go to Monitoring section, and then under Data Monitoring, uh, now we have added a new tab for Logic F. So yeah. So here you would be you, should, you would be able to add. Um, so here you would be able to add a new logic app data monitoring. So you just have to specify name. One one thing you have one thing to note here is this is in tune with all other data monitoring that we had previously. So um, uh, you you could see that the page is very familiar. The only section that differs is uh, the set data filter section. So here uh, we would list what are all the subscriptions that we have configured in uh, the structure 60 for Logic App for Azure. And then if you, if you choose a particular subscription, then the related Logic App will be displayed in the uh, drop down here. And then um, for each of the Logic App, we can monitor like uh, about uh, 30 uh, metrics. So uh, in, in metrics, if you see like there are two kinds of metrics, like one is uh, related to time. So action latency, the latency kind of uh, 
metrics would be uh, having a, a unit of time, and then uh, we would have count as another unit. So we can we can choose a particular uh, metric that that we want to monitor. For example, we can choose run succeeded. And then uh, we, we have to choose uh, the notification condition. So this has to uh, um, uh, chosen based on the uh, metric that we choose above. So if, if, if it is count, then this number indicates the count. And if it is going to be uh, something like a latency, then it is going to um, denote the time. So once we configured it, we can set the uh, monitoring uh, frequency so daily, weekly, monthly, which is uh, common to all data monitoring. And then uh, here uh, you, you can you can select whether you want to day, whether you want daytime to, in, to be included in monitoring, and uh, or, or not. So by default uh, we, we we would not include daytime uh, filter. So what uh, the monitoring service would do is it would uh, uh, fetch uh, data from the beginning of the time. But uh, since Azure for Azure uh, ma maintains only 30 days uh, worth of metric data, so only the 30 days will be available. But if you want to specify uh, a daytime uh, condition, then we can choose the second option, and then we have to choose timestamp. So once once we've done it, uh, we can save it. For now, let me just close it. And once the once the monitoring service at the back end picks up the new monitoring detail, and it will update the next run at a time, and then it will it would continue to mon it will continue monitoring that particular logic apps. And uh, for each Monitoring, uh, you would be uh, uh, shown with the uh, data monitoring dashboard. There will be an entry for logic apps uh, execution. So, for example, uh, the, for each execution, we, we would have details like what are the warning uh, threshold, error threshold, and what is the actual result. Uh, and then um, the details of our logic apps metric query. So, here I'm monitoring a subscription name called MP, MP subscription, and then the logic app name is Twitter Analytics, and the metric name is Run Subscription. So and also the email will be sent just like any other uh, data monitoring that are there in the structure system. Um, and also uh, the next uh, uh, feature is uh, related to anti services. So under infrastructure settings, previously we had the stuck servers where we would list uh, uh, details like memory and CPU for the stuck servers. And if you click uh, for more detail, then we would be showing the CPU usage and memory usages data. So here we have added a new tab for NT services, which would list all the window services uh, for the particular stack server. Um, and also you would be able to perform operations like start, stop, just like you would do in uh, uh, services.msc. So uh, you can do that uh, now with right from right from the stack service. You can also do a bulk start and stop. So uh, this would select all the started services, and, and then you can perform stop those kind of operations if it is possible. And uh, we have also added a new page for SQL servers, which is similar to Bistock servers, but um, uh, whatever, whatever the SQL server that we have configured on Bistock system will be listed here. And then uh, similarly, we can uh, click for more details, and then the usage will be shown here. Uh, here, uh, similarly, uh, we, we also have anti services. And also, like uh, if you perform some operation, it will be it would be available on live feed. Uh, so um, one, one, once the operation is done, you, you can go to live feed and uh, view uh, the detail. And um, the next uh, feature is uh, SQL Server jobs. Uh, so if you go to SQL Server instances and um, select the particular instance. Uh, previously, we were listing only uh, the, the list of SQL jobs and uh, and now with this release, you would be able to perform options like enable or disable. So you can enable and disable SQL Server jobs from your from the stack facility. You don't have to go to uh, SQL Server for doing. It. So with that, uh, the new features has uh, all of the new features have been explained. And let me uh, quickly show the enhancements that are that are uh, there for this release. So. The first announcement uh, is uh, previously we had message box. Um, yeah. So previously, under health check tools, we had message box uh, viewer to view the message box uh, data. So uh, since Microsoft has duplicated it and they have introduced a new tool called Mr. Health Monitor, uh, it was actually introduced two years ago. So. Um, uh, with that, uh, we, uh, we we have replaced it with uh, the new new one. So if you 
go to Bistec Health Monitor, and you, for first you have to install the tool, um, uh, and and then once you install the tool, you have to configure the settings. So if you go to the settings section, um, you will have a Bistec Health Monitor page. There you can you have to uh, give the installation path of that particular tool. Uh, and then once 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 that is done, you can choose the sh schedule for that uh, um, run. So uh, and and then you can save it. So one, once that is done, you can see like uh, for for each hour the uh, report will be will get generated. So uh, so whatever the information that is there in the circuit meter will be shown here. And also, if you want to run the report on demand, you can use run BHM now. So this would this would this would trigger the trigger a report generation uh, when, when you actually select it, and your, the report the page should get updated in within one minute to uh, reflect the new uh, report. And also, the next enhancement is around the uh, uh, alarm configuration. So previously, um, when you go and edit a particular alarm, you won't be able to edit the alarm name. So from this release, uh, that is uh, enhanced, and you, you would be able to edit the alarm, alarm names now. And also, you can do a bulk uh, change to the status. So you can select all the alarms and uh, disable it, and you can enable those kind of operations. And uh, uh, so in, in previous release in version 8.3, we have introduced a feature called uh, Notification uh, webhook notification channel where we can specify uh, a web, webhook channel for posting our this stock uh, notifications. Uh, in this release, what we have made is uh, we have made the uh, notification channel configurable for every alarm. So if you, if you choose a particular alarm and, and try to edit it, at the last page, you can uh, choose the webhook and you can override the global uh, settings here. So uh, you would be able to have different URLs for uh, each uh, uh, each alarm. And then uh, finally, uh, we have made a like, lo lot of performance improvement around logic apps, both in operation section and monitoring. Uh, so uh, previously, uh, the logic apps if, if you go and load logic up, if there are many logic up, it would take uh, more time to fetch all the data. With this release, it, 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 it is like uh, within seconds you would be able to see the data. Okay. With that, I conclude the presentation. So, Gauri? Yeah, thank you, Vishnu. Thank you, Uma. Uh, I think we can see quite a lot of uh, questions that's been posted. Um, so. Uh, Srini, would you be able to answer uh, these questions? Hi, Gauri. Yeah, hi. Uh, I already uh, updated those questions. Do you want me to uh, ex uh, you know explain them briefly to the users? Yes, please, Srini. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so there was a uh, question from uh, Matty. He wanted to know uh, whether you will be able to, if, if there is a password change for the endpoint, whether you will be able to uh, kind of uh, show an error message onto the entry. Uh, yeah, yeah, answer to Matty that yes, it uh, Bistock 360 uh, will kind of show an error message and makes that entry as an orphan. Orphan one that indicates that there is some problem in connecting connecting to that endpoint, and when that is fixed, uh, it's uh, one one thing to note here is that it's a manual entry that we cannot get the passwords from the bindings, so it's going to be a manual entry uh, when you are configuring uh, configuring that particular endpoint. So, and there was another question from. Uh, uh, Deepul, uh, he he was asking whether we'll be able to change the password for NT services. Uh, no, currently we don't support that because sometimes it might uh, lead to some problems there uh, because the NT services are handled separately uh, for the credentials. So what we support here is that uh, you will be able to uh, perform all the uh, operations uh, such as uh, starting, stopping, resuming, and uh, uh, there are a couple of uh, operations that you can perform. So you, you, you will not be able to change the password from Bistock 360. So I think the, these are couple of questions uh, I, I got in the chat window, uh, Gauri. Are Thank there you, anything Shri. else? Yeah. Um, before we move to Service Bus 360, has anybody got any questions with relating to the new features or any existing features in the Stroke 360? 
we can wait for a couple of minutes before we start our uh, service bus 360. Okay, I think uh, we can, if you have any questions, please feel free to post it while we do the session with uh, Arun on Service Bus 360. So uh, Arun will be doing next set of presentation. Um, so what's going to happen now is uh, he will take you through all the new fee 360. And as mentioned in our uh, email, uh, there are quite a lot of new uh, features introduced to Service Bus 360, especially around integration with other um, uh, uh, with other uh, tools and softwares. So Arun, uh, over to you. Thanks, Gauri. Thank you very much for uh, uh, the brief introduction. And uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Arun, joining from Service Bus 360 team. In the next uh, few minutes, I would like to uh, um, go through uh, the functionalities that are available in Service Bus 360 to set the context right. For those who have not attended our previous webinar on uh, Service Bus 360 introduction, uh, it will be a quick. Uh, walk through for uh, all of you to understand what features that were that are uh, already available in service bus 360 platform and uh, i will uh, do a demonstration of all the new features that are uh, implemented in the past one or two months so similar to bistock 360 service bus 360 is a, a platform um, which we have built as a software as a service uh, that will provide um, efficient tool set to manage uh, uh, any enterprises uh, Microsoft Azure Service Bus namespaces. So um, similar to Bistock 360, we are positioning this particular uh, platform as a one uh, platform where you can manage, monitor, and analyze your uh, Azure Service Bus namespaces. So let us quickly take a look at what are uh, the features that are available in the application right now, and uh, then we will move on to the demo. So with Service Bus 360, you will be able to associate uh, namespaces from various Azure subscriptions, and you can manage them from one, one from a single uh, single place. So we have uh, followed uh, the recent namespace segregation that has been announced by Microsoft, and you will be able to um, associate different namespaces of uh, uh, various types like messaging relay and event hubs. We also have implemented a functionality where uh, we allow the users to uh, easily uh, migrate the connection strings from Service Bus Explorer, which is one of the prominent tools that uh, all the administrators use to manage their Service Bus namespaces. So we need to make, we want to make their life easy in migrating to Service Bus 360. So uh, they can just uh, upload the configuration file which contains the uh, namespace connection strings that they have uh, uh, saved while they use Service Bus Explorer. And uh, this particular page will list all the namespaces that have been uh, uh, saved in the configuration file. So we allow the users to select appropriate namespaces that they would like to associate with Service Bus 360. So this is a very uh, uh, basic uh, um, dashboard that provides a snapshot of the namespaces that we have associated with Service Bus 360. It provides a list of, uh, it, it provides the count of queues and topics and other entities that are available in the namespace and it also provides a snapshot of uh, the count of alarms and what is the status of the, those alarms. Coming to the operation side of it, uh, we will be able to very easily change the status of each entity like queue, topic, event hub, or a relay uh, with just a, a click of a button. You need not uh, uh, provide access to the Azure portal for just managing the service bus namespaces. Providing access to Azure, so, uh, Azure portal will open up access to plenty of other uh, infrastructure that are associated with that particular uh, subscription. 
And with the user access policy that we have uh, uh, integrated with Service Bus 360, you can uh, even uh, restrict uh, the number of people they can manage Service Bus namespaces. And in future, we are also bringing in uh, capabilities so that you can uh, confine the users only to manage appropriate namespaces that they have that they uh, that they are allowed to. So now you will also be able to edit the properties of uh, service bus entities and all these activities are uh, audited. So similar to Bistock 360, we have a concept of alarm. You will be, uh, it's a very straightforward process creating alarms. It's as similar as uh, you create alarms in Bistock 360. Once you have created an alarm, you will have to associate a resource with that particular alarm. Uh, in this particular screen, you see a particular topic being associated with an alarm, and we have made some configurations uh, where uh, you are you can monitor certain properties of that particular topic. Uh, one thing I would like to emphasize here is with Service Bus 360, you will also be able to monitor uh, the subscript the properties of the subscriptions for the topic and properties of the partitions for the event types respectively, which is not possible in any other tool that are available in the market now. So once you have associated your resources to your uh, one of the alarms that you have created previously, you will be able to see a summary of uh, um, uh, summary of the status of all the entities that has been associated to this particular alarm. In this particular screen, you can see some uh, seven entities associated to threshold alarm, and this is the state of each and every entity. Some are in a healthy state, some are in warning, and some are in uh, error. And if you want to take a look at the summary of errors and warnings for each and every resource, that's quite possible. You will see uh, how these uh, entities have violated your configuration. For example, in this particular subscription, it looks like the user was uh, expecting an active message count of uh, uh, 10, but the actual uh, count is 43, and it's, uh, it, it has violated the configuration, and it has moved to error state. So all these uh, um, uh, all these inferences, what we get through the monitoring, we just not see them on the dashboard alone. We also can we also uh, can receive alerts through various notification channels. So this is the format in which you will be receiving an email notification, and uh, we, we, in quite a few few minutes, we will also see uh, the other notification channels that we have introduced with Service Bus 360. So that gives a summary of all the features that have uh, that uh, that are predominantly being uh, used by our uh, customers in Service Bus 360. And uh, for this particular session, we will uh, uh, spend more time on uh, the new features that uh, that we have added. So this is a list of new features that we have uh, introduced in the last uh, uh, few weeks, and a couple of features in this list are uh, about to be released in a couple of days. So with Service Bus 360, you will now be able to import entities from two different namespaces. For example, if you have a dev namespace and you configure the entities for all the, um, if you configure the entities with all your requirements, and uh, if you uh, once you have tested it in your uh, uh, dev and UAT environment, if you want to move the same configuration to production, with Azure Portal it is a manual task. You need to redo all the, you need to recreate the queue, you need to uh, uh, modify the properties as you have set in uh, dev and UAT, and one. Though you have thoroughly tested it in UAT, since it is a manual process in setting up the queue in production, uh, it, it's always uh, prone to uh, manual errors. So with Service Bus 360, we can completely avoid it, and uh, with a with, uh, couple of clicks, you will be able to move the um, uh, entities between the namespaces. And one thing which uh, which uh, any administrator would be interested is to see why this dead message has been moved to dead letter, and uh, it it needs to be very simple for them to see how we can uh, how we can capture the description of the errors. So we have displayed uh, the error uh, description on the UI, and we do have plans to uh, mention them or. Uh, uh, connected through the notification channel, so you will be alerted when a particular message moves to dead letter for so and so reasons. And with uh, this, uh, with the recent release, we also have introduced the resubmitting the messages uh, from the entities. So once the messages have moved to dead letter, you have an option to resubmit either to a main queue or to a different queue or a topic. 
And uh, we also have introduced a new feature called Send Activities for Event Hubs, where you can test the availability of Event Hubs by uh, creating a scheduled activity and uh, uh, creating an activity which will start immediately as soon as you initiate it. And you can save the configuration for future use. Uh, we will see a demo of these uh, new features in, a quite, in next few minutes. The next new feature, what I would like to show, uh, explain here is the relay endpoint monitoring. It is as similar to the web endpoint monitoring what you have seen in the stock 360. Uh, but the difference, the only difference here is you will be connecting to the endpoint that you have exposed through Azure Service Bus Relay. We have in, uh, integrated new notification channels. Previously, all the alerts have been sent only through SMTP. That to our uh, own uh, uh, email uh, um, channel, but with this new uh, feature, uh, the users will be able to configure their own lack or pager duty or SMTP channels which they want to use. And uh, similar to Bistock 360, we have also uh, introduced governance and auditing functionality where you will be able to track your operations. For example, if a user has modified the property of a particular entity, you will be able to track the operations for a particular period of time. And activity history, like uh, we have created a send event activity for event ups, and we are uh, uh, kind of uh, tracking all those activities. When an activity has been created, and what is the progress, and when it has completed, and what was the configuration. And we will be uh, reproducing the same functionality for queues and topics, and that functionality will be available by end of this month. So by end of this month, you will be able to send the messages to all entities within uh, service bus namespaces. And the next thing in the governance and, governance and auditing is the alert history. Whatever notification that have been sent through any of the notification channels, they are uh, uh, tracked and uh, stored uh, in our governance and auditing uh, 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 section so that you can audit the alert history for future purpose. So with that, I would like to take you through a quick uh, demo of all these new functionalities. I hope you are able to follow um, the slides, whatever I have explained right now. And with that, I will move to the application screen. OK. So what you see here is a very uh, uh, basic dashboard that provides a snapshot of all the namespaces that have been associated. So for this discussion, I am just going to select a couple of namespaces uh, and uh, demonstrate all the new features. So right now, uh, if you see, I have got a couple of uh, namespaces under messaging category. I have one for development and another for UAT. I have got uh, like uh, n number of entities within uh, the development uh, namespace. And I would be interested to import some of the entities from this particular uh, namespace to my UAT. So let me uh, switch to the UAT namespace and click import here. You can either import the entities from a file. It means, uh, you, uh, as I said earlier, Service Bus Explorer is the tool that, has, that is being used prominently in uh, managing the Service Bus namespaces. And the, those who have got uh, exposure to Service Bus Explorer would know you will be able to export the configuration as an XML file. So we, we have the capability within Service Bus 360 to import the uh, entities from that XML file, or you can import the entities from a different namespace associated with Service Bus 360. So for this demonstration, I'm going to select the development uh, namespace uh, that we are, that we have already associated and just saw uh, the list of queues uh, in the development namespace. So let me quickly select a couple of uh, uh, entities that I need to move to UAT. And it looks like there are few uh, entities that have some name conflict. Uh, name conflict. So um, we can change the name very easily here. And that's it. With the click of a button, all these uh, uh, queues with the uh, with the configuration what you have done on the UAT have been moved to uh, your uh, UAT namespace. And you will also see a summary of uh, errors 
why that particular entity was not able to uh, uh, not uh, why we have we have why service bus 360 was not able to move that entity between these two namespaces it looks like this particular uh, uh, namespace doesn't allow um, migrating this particular entity for so and so reason that is explained here so once you can uh, rectify that issue you will be able to move that um, entity to this particular namespace the next thing I would like to showcase here is the di display of error description for dead letter messages. In this particular queue, I can see there are uh, uh, thousand plus message that has been moved to dead letter. Let us just have a, take a look at what were the reasons. So as of now with Service Bus 360, you will be able to pull the messages only in peak clock mode. We development is in progress to pull the message in receive and delete mode as well. And uh, as of now, Service Bus 360 allows you to resubmit the message in peak clock mode. In a couple of weeks, we will be introducing uh, resubmission with receive and delete mode as well. So if you see here, uh, you, you get to see the initial, uh, uh, you get to see the title of the error reason what is the reason the message has moved to dead letter and it looks like this message has moved due to uh, time to live expired exception and this gives you the detailed uh, uh, details of the error description and if you have created any exception that is custom uh, created by the user you will also be able to filter the messages based on that and you will see uh, the appropriate description that uh, accompanies the custom uh, error and we are in development in progress to create a, to display a simple analytics to show a summary of how many messages have been uh, moved to dead letter message for so and so reason. For example, we have got uh, these dif five different uh, exception reasons and we will give you a summary of how many message has been moved to dead letter due to TTL expired exception and header size, header size exited exception and so on and so forth. So that is going to be an initial level of analytics that will be available in next uh, few weeks. So now that you have messages in the uh, dead letter, the next step uh, the user would be interested is to resubmit the messages to any of the uh, queue or a topic. So it's very straightforward here. You select the messages that you want to resubmit and click this resubmit button. You will be listed with all the queues and uh, topics that are available in this particular namespace. You can select any, you can select the same queue or a different queue that you want to resubmit to. And after the confirmation, you can see the messages are being resubmitted and you will see a summary of, a summary of uh, uh, the status like what is, uh, whether the message has been submitted successfully or not. So with that I would like to move to the next functionality where I would like to showcase uh, send activities for uh, event hubs. I will switch to uh, event hub namespace. So I have already created uh, an activity which is uh, of scheduled type. So let me just quickly show you the configuration of this particular activity. This activity has got a name uh, test 2000. So in this particular activity, I am going to create like a thousand events and uh, send it to a particular event hub. And I have a message here. It's an invoice uh, message JSON. Uh, we will improve the UI so that you can see the complete message here and you can also add custom properties for the message. And this is the ba main configuration page. Like here you will be able to select which event hub you need to uh, my, uh, you need to send the events to. In this particular namespace you have got only one event hub and you can uh, mention the partition key so that based on this key value all the events will 
will uh, will be submitted to the same partition within the event hub which will be uh, identified by the lease manager and if you want to specifically send those events to a particular partition that is also possible by selecting this configuration and you can create a batch of uh, different uh, different count of batch of uh, activities so that you can send the messages in parallel so if i create a, uh, if i increase the batch count here these 1000 events will be sent across to this event hub through two different batches and you can also configure the uh, think time so that you can delay the event uh, event uh, that is being transmitted to the event hub now for every one second there will be an event triggered you can even uh, increase the uh, time here you can also create a uh, task count so task count is the configuration where you will send uh, the messages in two different processes so all these thousand events will be sent in two different processes based on the task count and the send batch for every uh, activity like uh, for any instance there will be two events sent uh, to the event hub so you can uh, create an activity which uh, you can schedule or even without scheduling you can configure an activity that you will run immediately so for this demo i have created an activity which will run um, uh, which will run uh, like uh, every day for uh, next to 10 times so every day uh, it will uh, it will uh, initiate an activity at 6:30 pm and for next to 10 occurrences you can also select the end by date so that uh, you can uh, restrict the activity not by occurrences but by the end date So for the, in the best interest of the demo, let me quickly run this activity by clicking this run once button. And uh, this particular activity has uh, created an instance and it is in progress. If you can see here, you can see the status of that particular uh, activity that we have just instantiated. So out of the thousand uh, uh, events, it has already transmitted four events and it progresses you can also see the activity details what is the message this is the message that we have uh, sent as a payload for this particular event and these are the custom properties and this is the basic configuration next I would like to demonstrate uh, the relay endpoint monitoring I will switch to the relay namespace I have a bunch of uh, uh, endpoints uh, available in this relay namespace and in this particular demo we will be monitoring the endpoint uh, that we have exposed through this particular end, uh, relay by name endpoints which is of type HTTP. Okay, so if you see here, I have already created a configuration which monitors one of the endpoints. Let me just quickly take you through the configuration of this particular uh, endpoint monitoring. So I have an endpoint that is exposed through this WCF relay URL and uh, this is the method that is exposed through this relay. You can define the authorization credentials. For example, if you have secured your uh, uh, endpoint uh, by username and password credential, you can very easily configure this uh, uh, authorization uh, uh, credentials in this particular form. And uh, if at all your uh, um, endpoint uh, demands a payload, like if you want to, uh, if it is a get method, if it is on a um, uh, query string parameter and if it is a pay, uh, post method if you want to uh, push a payload of uh, various properties you will be able to configure those parameters uh, the key value pair here 
you can also define the custom header that has to be that has to accompany this particular request in this demo i am just going to give you a uh, keep uh, i am just going to use a simple uh, endpoint that just uh, exposes a method called get customer details and uh, uh, we will be monitoring certain values of that particular uh, endpoint so here i am expecting a status code of 200 if the if there is any error it will be responding with a different status code and it should throw a warning if there is a, a different status code and i am expecting a key keyword called the first name in the response of that particular uh, endpoint request if that keyword is not available it needs to throw me a warning and you can also define uh, the response time here if the response time violates this particular configuration you will be receiving an alert so it looks like with that uh, with all those uh, uh, combinations or configuration what i have done uh, it looks like the endpoint is available and uh, um, this is healthy let me quickly uh, show you uh, that particular endpoint on the postman i hope you are uh, you are able to see the postman request here i have a very simple uh, endpoint that uh, returns this uh, uh, json values like uh, basic details of a couple of persons and I have been monitoring that particular endpoint for this keyword first name and uh, since uh, um, this endpoint has responded with all the necessary configurations um, my uh, service bus 360 um, um, has determined the status as healthy let me quickly change the keyword that we are monitoring here And based on the configuration, you can uh, see Service Bus 360 is able to determine the status. Give it a minute so that we can see the difference. Okay, that keyword is also available. Name is a part of first name. Yeah, let me change the keyword to a different one so that it can uh, raise an alert. Yeah, so I was expecting a keyword by the name keyword here and uh, since that word was not available in the response, Service Bus 360 has uh, uh, determined the status as warning based on my configuration. So this is a relay endpoint monitoring and you will also see a, a summary of those issues on the monitoring dashboard. Next I would like to show uh, the notification channels that we have uh, integrated with Service Bus 360. So I have an alarm here and uh, which I have configured to um, which I have configured to monitor the dead letter uh, status of a particular queue and uh, these are the very basic configurations that you are familiar with this 360 you can uh, create an alarm uh, with uh, two different uh, types one is of uh, um, a threshold type and another is a, a status type and uh, here we have introduced the notification channel right now you have got four different notification channels which you can use to send alerts to one is the default service bus 360 email channel and the rest of three are uh, pager duty slack and uh, smtp so if your team has got uh, got a different uh, notification channels uh, being used you can configure them for example for the pager duty you can provide the integration key so that all the uh, all the alerts that are generated through this particular alarm 
will be directed to that particular uh, pager duty channel and the slack have got a hook uh, which uh, identifies the channel in the slack platform and you can uh, also define a proper summary so that you will be able to uh, see the alert um, arriving in your slack channels you can define n number of channels within service bus 360 based upon your requirement for example you may have different teams one for it infrastructure management one for uh, uh, finance so for example if any invoice uh, is uh, having a uh, if any invoice uh, message is malformed if you want to inform your uh, uh, finance team you can create a flag channel for your finance team and divert all the alerts to that particular channel and if you have a admin team which overlooks all the um, IT side of uh, your service bus namespace like if any of your queues uh, got disabled to for so and so reason and if any of your uh, endpoints are not being monitored and uh, such kind of IT infrastructure you can create uh, infrastructure management you can create a slack channel for your IT administrators and divert all your alerts uh, through that particular channel for this particular alarm I have configured a couple of channels one for pager duty and another for slack and uh, I have started receiving those messages in uh, my pager duty and slack channel and uh, um, I am uh, displaying that for your uh, uh, for you to take a look. So if you see here, the pager duty has received uh, uh, the message with the summary what I have configured in my alarm, and it also gives you the details why this alert, this particular alert has been uh, triggered. It looks like you have got a relay endpoint which doesn't have any listeners at all. And one advantage with uh, notification channel in service bus 360 uh, connecting to your pager duty is it will all it will raise an alert for violation situation, and uh, it will also change the status of your ticket and pager duty once the issue is resolved. So we have such a level of uh, uh, capability in integrating with pager duty. And with Slack channel, it is almost similar. You will start receiving all your messages here, alerts here, and you can see the details of your uh, alert. So it's very, it becomes very handy for, uh, for your uh, team, which uses various uh, um, communication mechanism so that you receive alerts in uh, all those uh, channels of your uh, interest. So these are the new features we have got in Service Bus 360 at this stage. And uh, to take a quick look at what is coming up next, we will be uh, implementing the send message capabilities that you have seen in uh, event hubs for for uh, other uh, namespace type messaging where you will be able to send messages to queues and topics and we are uh, building entity listeners like uh, what you have seen for relay you will also be able to see listeners for queues topics and event hubs so that you can receive messages by uh, initiating those listeners and in the analytics we are uh, uh, yet to introduce uh, capabilities and one capability that will be available by end of this month is uh, a quick summary of um, messages that are in the dead letter uh, uh, queue or uh, subscription in a particular topic. So it will give you a classification of uh, the messages within the dead letter. How many messages are uh, dead letter due to time to leave expiration and due to header site exceeded so on and so forth. And we will be introducing uh, the ingress and the egress analysis of uh, event hub in uh, next uh, few weeks. So this is what we have got in uh, Service Bus 360 and uh, thank you very much for your patience listening and we are uh, open to take any questions now. now. Yeah. Thank you Arun. Um, I think that was a very good presentation from, from Service Bus 360 side as well. I think we just had only one question uh, from Deepul Sharma who's left the conversation now. Uh, any possibility to peek into a dead message and perhaps its context properties? Uh, yeah, and uh, the answer is yes, you will be able to uh, peek into dead messages and its custom properties. 
um, so just cautious of time uh, I once again thank you all uh, for some so for some of you it might be a bit late in the evening as well uh, but uh, we will try to we we've recorded this session and we might also try to record another session which uh, which has got a bit more clear audio apologies for the issue with the audio in the beginning so uh, as soon as we've got a good recording uh, we'll share it with you all for your future references and to share with uh, among your colleagues and other team members um, so I think uh, with this we would like to close the call and um, hopefully we can uh, sync up via emails in the coming weeks. Have a good day.